my path's a little different. Um, so I was in high school, my high school program, uh, I'm from originally from just outside of uh, Detroit, Michigan, a town called White Lake. And my high school had, at the time, the number three best production studio production setup in the country. Or high school. My high school. Oh, wow. We had full studio. We had editors. We had everything. My senior year, they got an avid nonlinear system. So in 1996. I think my high school had a TV on a cart that <laughs> yeah, they we had those too. around and we let had, you. Let we you had you. those too. For me, I'm, I'm more of like the front end of it. I'm just making it up. Of a similar nature or character. JM Cast. JJJM Cast. But we get shocked often by Chris. You Google my name, it always pulls up Ric Flair and Blackjack Mulligan. That's another story for another time though. Welcome to the first JM cast. I am Rick Mulligan, along with uh, co-host and co-founder of JMK Creative Group. Greg Johnson. We are a uh, production company based in Dallas, Texas, and this is our podcast that we're putting out in the world to tell people about what we do and what we can offer and who we are and ways that we grow our business and hopefully ways that maybe you can learn from what we do and potentially grow your business or hire us to help you grow your business. Right. I mean, this is to, you know, do several things for us. We want it to, you know, support our own business. Absolutely. But we also want to, um, you know, hopefully people that listen to us can, if they want to do the same kind of a thing, they can see from our experience and our growth and what, because I mean, we're, we're a new business yeah. and we're a growing business, which is exciting. But we want to, you know, we want to get the word out more of what we do and who we are and what we can do for potential clients. But at the same time, we want others that want to do the same kind of thing to be able to have a chance to be able to do the same thing and learn from maybe our mistakes. Oh, because we, we make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. There's The ball has hit the floor a few times, and that's but that's part of... I'm trying to remember one, but I can't. I well, can't write there's off one, the top but we're, of my head. we're not going to talk about that. Oh, one. we have a mistake. Well, oh, okay. I don't know if it was a mistake as much as it was a learning experience. Well, I mean, we have lots of learning experiences, yeah. Rick. I, I mean, I mean, <laughs> every day is a learning experience. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've we've learned that you must hit record. You've been burned by that before. <laughs> Make sure you're in focus. Yes, we've oh, focus been is... burned by that before. Um, we've also learned that cameras sometimes don't like the temperature. <laughs> yeah, Sony cameras are not what, the biggest I fans don't, of outdoor I, hot. I, you know, I'm not still completely understanding. I feel like it may do it a little more than I would expect it to. Oh, yeah. But, Canada's and I've noticed, I've noticed too, when we do our, uh, the podcast with our client, Mm -hmm. that one of the cameras that we use, it does it a lot more often since I had them all cleaned. Well, that, that camera also sits in the, the, they have sunlight that comes through that window and that, that's the only camera that sits in the direct light. Yeah. So that ha I got to think that factors into it a little bit, but I don't know. I mean, we can always try switching those cameras around. That's true. We can always uh, try flipping well, them. You I, know, was put, even, I was called today, the other one's back. Oh, well, I go. was thinking they totally forgot about me, but they said, you can come get it. And I go, I was like, since it's been so long, how much? Right. And they're like, oh, it's free. I'm like, oh, wow. Sony cleaned it, basically. Something was in the way making the servo little thing, shutter thing go. Oh, wow. Move around and they cleaned it. And apparently now our, I haven't seen it yet. We haven't used it. Right. I haven't put my lens on that makes it do its funky right, thing. Right, it does that. <laughs> So it, we, had, we had a camera that was was glitching very badly, and it's a, it was a Sony camera, and we couldn't figure out what was happening. So fortunately, there's a place here not too far from us that does a really good job. I've I mean, used them. In the yeah, past. we can say the name of it. Garland, yeah, Garland camera. Garland camera. They're yeah. great. Yeah. I've, I've used great them server. to clean all my cameras in the past, and we had them to recently do ours. And I love that place. I I would highly recommend the guys over there. In fact, now that all my cameras are clean and have been looked at, it's probably your turn. Uh, if you haven't so in a while, yeah, my Sony definitely needs yeah, to go. Yeah, your Sony's Canon's not mine because <laughs> they even like one of them. They're like, How long has this 
and you, you go outside a lot with this camera? <laughs> I go, well, I mean, yeah, we use it outside, but what does it look like? I've been on a gravel dirt road with <laughs> <laughs> chalk dust that's funny. coming up. I mean, what are you saying? Right, that's funny. It makes me wonder if when I got it, because I did buy it. You I bought, bought, I bought yeah. it, one of them used, yeah. um, maybe even two of them used. Um, wonder if that person just wasn't using it, was sitting in the corner and just had a lot of dust yeah. on it. So it awesome. hadn't even been cleaned. Kind of like my 70 that's like, sitting over there that has a layer of dust. Note on to it. self, when you buy a camera used, you might want to get it clean before you use it. Probably. But yeah, um, yeah. we lucked out at work, but yeah. Um, yeah, we might have got lucky on that one. Uh, more than likely. But well, if, I've had, because my evolution is I started with, uh, I bought a, uh, a standard deaf camera for 900 bucks. I used that for, when I went for, as a freelancer, I used that for about a year. And it was at the time when nobody really needed high def stuff, so the standard was fine. I went to a P2 camera, which was great for about two years. And then I switched over to using um, Sony 7Ds, because there's also a 70D, so it gets a little yeah, word dude, of mouth tricky there. You just found that out yesterday. It was funny yesterday. <laughs> did a teaching a training class yesterday, and literally they, they told me they had seven d's no they had seven d seven zero d's a little bit of a different camera not drastically but so i went to seven d's and then when we started the business we had used a few canons that a friend of ours was kind enough a friend of mine was kind enough to let us borrow uh and then we purchased sony's we went that way and then we have a sony and then i also still have one of his canon 5d's that i use um so we kind of have different options there and we're in the market to look to do more of a traditional new style shoulder camera, which yeah. I think would be cool. That's where we have to get there. the most experience on, believe yeah, it or absolutely. not. But I mean, you know, I've always heard it's not the camera, it's the person using it. But well, sometimes it is the camera. Sometimes the tools help, though. I mean, if you're using but still, a, I, you something know, you're comfortable with, it's easier. Yeah, but uh, I think a, a better trained person's always going to make a maybe lesser camera still look true and so i know a lot of clients out there they'll go "Ooh, i want a red or right. i want a airy or "Ooh, yeah. they get you know they get a little "Ooh, though, though that's cool you have that but then yeah. the you know the person that shows up ends up only owning one lens or <laughs> or what you know what whatever no that some obstacles in there i mean I'm just saying, having a cool, the cool toys are nice. Sure. But ultimately, you, you, you got to know how to use them. You got to be able to use them in the way they're to be used. True. Um, and having you know, one you fixed can, lens doesn't and, make sense. You know, for the clients, you can do really good work with less. Sometimes. Absolutely. You know, you'd be surprised what, what can be done with. Yeah. I mean, we're finding that out every day i mean we rent cameras and they're you know not the normal cameras we would probably go rent and we're like we get it we use it and we go wow that was kind of cool right no it's just well, the one that you've rented a couple times i like the look of it mm -hmm. when we have when you know it's the dslr cameras we use are nice and i love i love what we get from them i have no complaints of what we get from them but I miss the zoom capability. Sometimes and not, not, not actually the not actually the zoom process. The physical feature the of physical being able feature to of, do a servo zoom. Yeah, yes. Yeah. To to get that tight shot right. from you know way back. Yeah. Because it's impossible with our cameras to do that unless we were to get a couple add-on pieces and build the rig out and do it that way. But and shoot 4K nice. or higher mm -hmm. and then zoom in and post. Which but, is fine. But you I know, and we do that sometimes. But yeah, you know, it's nice to have that. So let's talk a little bit about kind of your your career, like kind of where how you got to where you, we are today for yourself. Well, um, so back when Craig was a little boy, <laughs> yeah, when little boy, I uh, it's funny. I was a I was a musician in college, and um, I went to another college to visit. And I went around the corner and saw, uh, I was in the arts building, and they had a television studio. That's always fun, isn't it? And I was like, hmm, interesting. 
And then right next to it, they had the television control room. Yeah, that room gets All you bells and time. rooms. And, and as a little kid, I always wanted to work for NASA in the mission control room. Which so, is the same thing. So they look see, identical. You see a TV control room, <laughs> they and you're look like, identical. oh, cool. Yeah, I buttons wanna, and TVs. <laughs> buttons. Yeah. I want to push them. And, and literally like 700 TV monitors where you're like, you don't need all those, do you? And then you find out they do. <laughs> yeah, but so I see the studio in the control room, and I go... Man, I never even considered that even as a option yeah. in my uh, of all the things I thought of. I right. did not think, oh, people actually do have careers working in TV doing that stuff. The behind the scenes stuff, the stuff you don't see. The, the, yeah, you see the people in front of TV, but not behind. And them. I was like, I, I, I was like, wow. So I, for the heck of it, I just enrolled in some classes and. It was like, dude, like playing in a playground to me. It wasn't oh, yeah. school anymore. It was like, yeah, you're not going to class. Yeah, I mean, I was doing, I was, I was taking tests and all that kind of stuff. And some of the professors try to be really hard and you know give you questions that are <laughs> like, like you know, like only one person can answer or whatever. And I, I remember I did one of the first tests like that. And I mean, I've never considered myself super smart, but I've never considered myself. You know, yeah, not, I, I'm not, in the same boat. Not, not uh, being smart. If, if I put so, in the work, I'll have the knowledge. So, and I didn't take notes or anything. So I go in, I take this test, and this is this this one professor. He's like, something happened that's never happened in the history of all my classes, and it's and it, it this we're not talking multiple choice tests. We're talking like fill in right, answers, yeah, yeah, yeah. essays, yeah, 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 yeah. all that kind of stuff. First time in the history, and I'm like, well, that ain't me. <laughs> and then he announces, it was me. I was like. Did you ace the test? Did I get lucky? <laughs> did you ace it? I guess. I guessed well. Oh, wow. I guessed well. That's he had awesome. never had someone ace his test. Of course, then I was just a teacher's pet the rest of the time. But <laughs> <laughs> When we get to my turn to tell you this, I have a very similar story. However, the teacher did not like me. <laughs> At all. And he was angry when I aced his test. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, but, I, go ahead. And I'll let you. But, yeah. No. So, anyway, I went to school. I did all that. And uh, we're going to fast forward a little bit. But just because I don't want to get through all the places yeah, we, we I We don't need to hear freshman, stuff. sophomore, junior, senior year. Yeah. Um, you know, and I don't want to tell you, like, job number one, two, three, four, and yeah. five. We'll get on to when I started in news. Gotcha. Um, I'd been working for an, another production company and I was in a role where I could hire people like freelancers and stuff. Okay. And some of the people I, I, um, hired, they worked in it at Fox four here in Dallas, here in Dallas. Okay. And, um, so I, they told me, Hey, we got a position open and I went over there and, but this happens to be, but this was like Chiron and graphics back in the day. Okay. The old toasters. And, uh, oh no, we didn't have toasters. <laughs> I learned on toasters. I don't even remember the name. Like uh, Infinity toasters. or something like that was the name of the Chiron, mm -hmm. I think, or something. And She's um, the same thing. Anyway, um, when I, when you have that position, like during the shows, you're really busy. Some right. prep work in between, but there's a lot of just kind of sitting downtime. around time. A ton of it. And so I'd go down to the editing area and just like pick up scripts and, and try to learn. I, you know, I talked to the, the, the head editor and she was like, yeah, go for it. Were they taped to tape still? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. This was definitely taped to tape, Old but, days. uh, I do that. And then after a while, you know, once she agreed that I knew what I was doing and it wasn't complete, you know, jump cup city, they were like, Hey, why don't you, you can do this. And right. next thing you know, it was like, I filled in vacations or I filled in oh, like go. they actually, and what was cool, is that the editors, because it's the Fox 4 union, yeah. editors got paid one rate, Chiron guys got paid another rate. Oh, so when that's I did, nice. When I worked as the editor, I got paid their, oh, their rate. So, so yeah, I was doing kind of- rates now are ridiculous. Yeah, so, so much money anyway, I was doing that, and, um, and then next thing you know, I applied to work in San Antonio. Okay. Which I mean, market number is San Antonio? Market like thirty six. Okay, so like you're, that. that's about where I started. Was like in the mid thirties. Thirty six, and um, again as an editor. Okay. 
And uh, but then football season comes up, and they need as many shooters as they could possibly oh, yep. do because they yep. love yep. high school football right, the best, in man. San Antonio. That's and I'm uh, from. so I, I had shot in college yeah. with that because, like I said, like a playground. That's what I did. I did I shot sports Fridays highlights and for the college for the high schools because we did a little sports yeah. show and so I knew, knew all about how to do that and well, to edit them or whatever and. Uh, so I did that, and next thing you know, they're like, well, you, you, you do pretty good on this. Why don't we have you go do a Vosat, or why don't we have you do this? Next thing you know, I'm the editor. Still, I'm the editor. Still on clock. And they're the like, editor. you know what? We're going to take our, our main anchor, and he's going to travel around to all these cities to visit places that have are built new stadiums, <laughs> and you're going to go with him with one of the Chiefs gears. And you're gonna you're gonna follow him and do our hour special on Did new you get stadium. Thrown into the fire? <laughs> I don't know if that was thrown in the fire. It was just kind of like, you, you sure you want me to do right, it? Yeah, I mean, like, I you got who's gonna fire. who's gonna be editing? <laughs> I mean, you're gonna send me on a five five city tour. That's funny. But uh, anyway, so I went from there. I went to CBS in Dallas. Okay. Came back up here as a fo- photographer. Gotcha. And then uh, original, then Channel Eight, where I spent like almost seventeen years. Which is where we met. Yeah, and that's where we okay. met. Um, oh, interesting. And uh, um, you know, I've I've one or one or two things in my career, <laughs> and, and we can talk about that some other time. Awards. But um, at the same time, I I didn't win a lot too, so yeah, it, 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 it took anyway. a long. Took a long time to get there, right. and when it did come, it well, those came. are my first awards sitting to your left. Those there, aren't so. your first. Those awards. are my first official ones that I actually received a trophy for. Oh, yeah, I've got a couple unofficials. Well, look at that. They have yeah, right. JMK on them. How Which about is that? A beautiful title, isn't it? <laughs> right. <laughs> Very cool, right here in your office. I know. Well, wife's office. <laughs> I make her keep it in here so she can remember me. So is that not your Lauren Greenfield Generation Wealth book? No. Okay. Not, nothing in this office. Or watermelon anymore. lemonade. The only thing that gets used in here by me is the printer. Everything else is a Watermelon upstairs. lemonade actually sounds kind of good. It's not. Oh, it it's might. a candle. I can light it. No, I'm just saying so. it sounds like a good drink. Like oh. lemonade <laughs> with watermelon. We might have some actually here. Actually. <laughs> she drinks, Michelle drinks watermelon drinks. My wife drinks watermelon drinks like crazy. Well, that explains Like the, crazy. It explains the candle. Anyway, so that's me. I don't know. Did you say you? My path's a little different. Um, so I was in high school. My high school program, uh, I'm from originally from just outside of uh, Detroit, Michigan, a town called White Lake. And my high school had, at the time, the number three best production studio production setup in the country. Or high school. My high school. Oh, wow. We had full studio, we had editors, we had everything. My senior year, they got an avid nonlinear system. So in 1996. I think my high school had a TV on a cart that <laughs> yeah, they we had those too. around and we let you, had, let we had you those too. see movies occasionally. Yeah. That's, a, that, that's the extent of our. We, uh, <laughs> no, we, ours was really crazy. The, and the, it was funny because the students before me they, they put out some amazing videos. Like a lot of it was music video covers of the students around school, and it was just amazing stuff. And, um, I became more interested in like doing the studio type stuff where we would shoot something as it happened in the studio. So we were right. doing a music video. It was like, well, let's shoot the music video live and have someone hot punch it in the control room. Yeah. So most of my stuff was more like that. And then I discovered editing. Then I was like, well, hang on, I can edit this. Like what is, and I, so routinely I took the intro class as a sophomore. I took the hour long class as a junior. And then my senior year I took both two-hour classes, and I had uh, independent study in video, and I had early release because I, I had met all my hours. So of my six-hour day, I spent four hours in the video production lab. I was always in there, and I would stay late and edit projects. And, I would and edit, again, I would, this is high school. Was my high school. <laughs> high school. I'm high school. 18. And I was a caddy at a country club when I was a kid, and I was my work ethic was ridiculous. Like I was at the country club every I day. I just saw Caddyshack too. This it's so bad. Like the last couple days. <laughs> it's so, it's so funny. They actually have the Rodney Dangerfield character, but it's not. It's Rodney a different guy. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. you can tell it's written for him. I mean, there's only two. Two. Yeah. I, I hate to like. No, you're good. Them. I don't care. Well, we had. They have two original characters. Right. You know what they are? It's uh, well, it's. Um, 
Uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name. He's the golf. Chevy Chase. Yep. And then, um, who's the second one? The other one you're not going to... The you're, gopher. Yes, that's it. Those are that's literally two. it. Yeah, those it's are like the only The gopher is a little bit more... Yeah. He, he makes it a little cheesy in yeah, yeah, number yeah. two. but uh, yeah. And they replaced Bill Murray with Dan Aykroyd. Yes. Essentially, it's the same. Kind of, except it, it's totally different. One's a greenskeeper. One, yeah, and this guy's been hired to like take someone out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, like, what crazy. the heck? Yeah. I really um, didn't like Dan Aykroyd's voice no. in it either. Yeah, like, it's weird. He talks like this the yeah, whole time. Yeah, like I, I miss Butterfield. Anyway, <laughs> you'll 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 see time to time on our podcast. We'll talk about movies. So of course, don't, I'm don't sure there'll be an episode where we do nothing but movies. <laughs> so uh, anyway, but, yeah, but we so. we we'll, we'll tell you some some JMK stories, yeah. and we'll tell you about you know our business. So. <laughs> um, and then when I got done with high school, went to a trade school. Well, when my high school had an Avid. Which at the time no one had. So I learned how to use a nonlinear editor in high school. I didn't see one until I was at Channel 11. Yeah. That was the well, first exposure to um, Well, when I went to my trade school, which was Spex Howard, which no longer exists, um, I think it no longer exists. Um, Actually, I get there day one and I'm like beyond excited to learn everything I already knew. Right. Like everything. We got to our editing class. And I sat down and the teacher was teaching it and I'm literally sitting in the back of the room, no joke, Greg, I had my arms crossed, I'm in the back of the room with my head back, trying not to snore. And the guy's name was John and John- I feel like I've seen this before. John looks at me and he goes, (laughs) so, uh, hey, uh, Mr. Mulligan there in the back, you think you know all this shit? That's exactly what he says to me. And I walk over and I sit down and I I literally went, and I'm just firing, and I'm firing, and I edit together like a 12 shot sequence in like two minutes. And he looks at me and he goes, you can go sit down. <laughs> like I just, I knew what I was doing and it was like got frustrating. So when we finally they tell us they had an Avid. That's all I wanted to do. And they're like, yeah, well you can't use that until your fourth quarter, your last, the last eight, the last eight weeks of school. And I'm like, well, what? Which that's all I'm there for. I want to use that. And that quarter rolls around and I sit down and then they tell me we only have eight hours in the quarter. So I only have eight hours the whole eight weeks to use it. I use that in the first day. I literally burned through my eight hours in the first day. And I cut together a Detroit Red Wings highlight reel because they just won the Stanley Cup. That was so good. Oh, when you didn't I, enjoy that at all. When I showed it to a girl who worked at Joe Louis Arena, she was trying to get it played at a game for me. She said it was that good, but they couldn't get copyright clearance for a couple things. But she literally is like, we would play this at the stadium, which all of a sudden lit me on fire of like, oh, I want to go, I want to do this. So I get done with trade school, can't find a job in TV. No one will hire me because I'm 19. I had two job interviews where people wanted an avid editor and they didn't believe my experience. They wouldn't even let me go sit down on the machine to show them I knew what I was doing. So frustrating. So I end up doing some odd jobs back and forth. Can't find a TV gig, nothing. Uh, I ended up going back to community college. I then go to Western Michigan University and I get in their program because they have a pretty good program. And uh, I take the first class. In the first class, there's a guy on stage. <laughs> the guy's got to be dead by now. Dr. Pagel. Okay. And he stands on the stage and it's it's a big auditorium, like, like theater auditorium. And he literally is standing there with his eyes closed and he's just reciting his his speech or whatever. He, it's memorized. He's literally said the same thing every day for however many years. He's just repeating, repeating. And it's like, you raise the hand, ask a question. He doesn't even see your hand up because his eyes are closed. And he brings it up and he mentions blue screen technology. And I'm like, I think they mostly use green screen now. So I, I get his attention. I ask a question and he goes, just sit down there and shut up, son. You don't know anything. I'm teaching here. And I'm like, okay, I think they mostly use green screen now but okay like I'm not gonna argue with the guy so fast forward like three weeks get our first task I guess it was in the textbook (laughs) probably (laughs) I don't know I didn't read the name textbook (laughs) we get to we get to the first task and he hands you know like they go to the row and they tell you to pass it down well I always sat on the far left end by myself a friend of mine sat next to me but I was by myself and it gets to where everyone gets a test and I don't have one and I was like Dr. Pagel I don't I don't have a test and he walks over and hands me one and he goes good luck and I go, what does that mean? He goes, good luck. And I looked at my friend real quick and I go, what are your first couple questions? I had a special test. <laughs> you had the special test. Like, what the hell is this? And I tear through it in like 15 minutes. And it's, it was multiple choice, 
true false and like three fill in the blanks and I'm, I'm no joke 15 minutes i tear through it and i walk up and i turn it in he looks at me and he goes you're never gonna pass my class and i go you want to grade it right now and i wanted him to grade in front of me because i thought he was gonna like right screw me or something whole class stops they're all looking up <laughs> he just goes through and he's got his red part and goes like pulls his pen out and clicks it real hard and starts going he's on already the page. got the red out already got Start, the red. <laughs> yep he starts going on the page and i don't see his hand ever touch the paper and he goes to the next page and he does the same thing and he goes to the last page and he goes to, and he looks at me and he goes throws it at me and he goes have a nice day and i go how'd i do and he looks at me and gra- i hand him the paper back and he writes 100 percent. he says have a nice day and i go thank you he did that for all three tests. He gave me a special, unique test for all three all three tests, and he was livid. Just because of the green screen. Because I called him out. Because oh. I embar- He he said it, he told another student that I embarrassed him. Oh. I was like, well. whatever, dude. So then when I I well, thank up, goodness your client skills have improved. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I end up getting. Uh, I'm in Kalamazoo at the time, and I get a job as a production assistant at the TV station there. They literally had a TV station like right, right. next to campus, and I get a job as a production assistant. And find out that everybody that worked at Channel 3 had him in class. And almost everyone had a similar story. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Almost well, everyone. I guess that's the, uh, the uh, what do they call it? The when, when the, the ones that the fraternity guys go through. The uh, initiation, initiation to get into Channel 3. Yeah, pe- Pagel's your initiation. <laughs> so uh, I spent eight years there. I started as a PA. I went, became an editor. Um, became a photog. And that's a whole. We could spend a whole episode on how I became a photog. Right. It's literally a very long story because I didn't want to do it. Well, mine was a little longer than oh, I made it so for long. sure. I had, the five guys that taught me had all been there twenty oh, years. Oh yeah, you've told me this. Story. So I learned from guy like I couldn't get out the door. Yeah, we need a whole episode. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it's it's a long <laughs> story. So uh, and then in '08 I packed my life up and moved to Texas without a job. And I said, let's right. see how much easier it is to get a job in Texas if I live here. Anybody know what happens in 08? Stations weren't hiring anybody. Right. They were laying off left and right. right. And I went to every station and I dropped off a tape, hand delivered a tape to every station. Nothing. Never heard anything back. And then it was through uh, another guy that was an editor, former editor at 8, that I kind of worked with him for a while. And then he found out there was an opening at 8 and referred me. And then Brian Hardcastle at Channel 8 hired me. And then I was there for two stints of a total of 12 years as an editor. There you uh, go. Never wanted to shoot there. Never cared. Yeah, to shoot there. which is always w- kind of an odd <laughs> nope. thing. Well, my back, but, I had because you had the experience. I had back issues though. You like, you always had the experience. Yeah, I had well, back you issues can't you can't use that as so. as because you you shoot now. Well, no, there's but, a difference though. We're not putting a big camera on my back. And but you want to get a big like camera? No, yeah. uh, no, it's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same. Anyway, you'll control. you'll everyone will find out. To, Rick, his um. How do I put this? His bark is worse than his bite. Oh yeah, I'll run. My or mouth. his bite is worse than the bark. Which, I run my how mouth. do you say it? Yeah, I, I he, run my he, mouth. he he. And 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 I don't say that in a negative way because oh. I mean the thing about Rick and I really appreciate about him. He's very passionate. He's very. I mean, when he feels a way a certain way, he feels a certain way. But he he knows he knows you know what to do. I can end. I can control myself. There's been a time or two when I came real close. Yeah, yeah. But, but overall, and and that's one thing you 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 got to do in this business is you have to you know you're going to deal with all kinds of people. Yeah, you got to bite your tongue. And you have got to just kind of kind of go with the flow sometimes, and even as much as you don't like it, and yeah, it's you know, but it's still rewarding because. True. You know you made the client happy, and that's what that's that's what what really matters. Well, that's always my goal, though. I, like I don't say no to a client ever. Like no is not afraid. I mean, it might be yeah, that's difficult. We got to figure it out. But I'll never tell them no. You and I might sit there and say it to each other. We can't do that. We'll never <laughs> tell them that. No. Um, but but that's because we we'll figure it out. Right. And that's the biggest thing is. I'm not a no person. I have never been. And it's like, you know, you, you figure out how to solve that problem. And we know enough people that we can call someone that can help us solve that problem. Right. So, well, Rick is our CEO of JMK creative group. 
um, I'm our creative. What it? What am I? Chief creative officer. Yeah. Some made up title we created CCO. for ourselves. Chief creative officer. Yeah. Yeah. I I I'm the one to turn in the the bills and he the should invoices be the CFO, and stuff. But, but, but you can't. Well, you can't legally. I <laughs> yeah, think in the state that, of Texas because I don't have any kind of yeah. uh, credentials for any of that. But, That's right. Um, I, but I basically do that stuff. He does all the money. <laughs> if it comes to the money, he deals with it. I don't do it. We hope you like our pad- podcast. Yeah. Uh, we're JMK Creative Group. And, um, you know, if anyone wants to ever hire us. JMKCreativeGroup.com. You know. It's a really nice website that I've designed myself. And if it's you don't like stuff, that's fine. I'm working on it. <laughs> I don't know how to do <laughs> those things. So I'm learning. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's all that's a learning good. process. Absolutely. Um, and a lot of the things we've done, we've done really in the last year. Yeah. Where we've gotten together where we really are in a position where we can talk about it and True. publicize it and promote it because before we just kind of like it Handcuffed. was literally word of mouth yeah and people people we knew and that's how we got any of the business that we got and uh it's a fun story to find out how it, how we started but i um, think it's a great story it's one of my favorite we'll stories, um so. we'll get there on another episode yeah. but in, thanks for listening to our podcast yeah please like share subscribe and until next time all the good stuff and mm. bye and we're out see you